One design flaw that I see in a lot of apps is having a delete button with no option to undo or to confirm the deletion first. You could implement an undo button, but then you have some complex state management issues to worry about. Or you could trigger an alert message, but that's kind of annoying for your users. What I want to show you today is how to build a hold to delete button, which I think is a refreshing take on how to prevent accidental deletion. And it's a great exercise for learning how to work with RxJS and Angular directives. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code on angularfirebase.com. The inspiration for this video comes from Josh on our Slack team who asked for a more elegant way to handle deletions than just showing a standard bootstrap confirm modal. I am definitely not the first person to come up with this idea. There's a number of apps that have started using this functionality instead of alert messages or undo buttons. And the idea is pretty simple. We have a regular delete button, but the user needs to hold it for a certain amount of time before the actual deletion is executed. The way this works is we have an Angular directive that can attach itself to any DOM element or other component, then track the time difference between the mouse down event and the mouse up event. Then we can emit a custom event every tenth of a second so we can update our progress bar while the user is holding the button down. I'm just in a regular Angular app and I have Angular Fire installed just so we have something meaningful to delete in an actual database, but this lesson's primarily focused on RxJS and Angular. The first thing we'll do is generate our directive by running ng-generate-directive holdable from the command line. We'll be able to attach this directive to a button and then keep track of its internal state and then emit events up to the parent component. To do that, we'll import host listener, event emitter, and output from Angular Core. We'll also bring in a few things from RxJS that we'll see here in a minute. The first thing we'll do is set up a custom event, and this is the data that we want to emit up to the parent component. This event will emit the number of milliseconds that a user has held the button down. So that allows the parent component to decide how long the user can hold the button before it fires off the delete operation to Firestore. In Angular, you can create public custom events by using the output decorator and making the value an event emitter. In our case, we'll just be emitting the number of milliseconds. And then if we look at the HTML, it would be used like this. We insert the holdable directive in a button, and then we wrap hold time in parentheses because it's an event, and later in the video, we'll define a function that handles that event. Let's go back to our directive, and the next thing we'll define is the internal state of this component. We can define it as a subject, which itself is just an observable that we can push values to. And there are two possible states that this directive can be in. Either the user's holding the button down, or they're not. The next thing I'll do is define an observable called cancel, which will be based off of the state source subject. Eventually, we'll set this observable up to only emit values when the user stops holding the button. But before we can do that, we need to first listen to mouse events on this element and then update the internal state. So there are two ways that a user can cancel holding the button. They can either stop clicking or they can move the mouse outside of the button area. We use host listener to listen to events like mouse up that are built into the DOM. And if we want to listen to multiple events, we can just stack them on top of each other like this. Then we can write a single method to run the same code when either event occurs. When the user stops holding the button, we just want to update the internal state on this directive to be cancel. This is important because we'll actually react to the state change when we keep track of the amount of time that the user has been holding down. The next step is to add a host listener for the mouse down event. And the first thing I'm going to do here is add a console log that will console log that the hold is started in bright green. And just a quick side tip, you can console log with custom CSS by doing percent %c on the first argument and make the second argument the actual styles you want applied there. The next thing I'll do is update the internal state to start so we know the user has started a new hold. Then I'll define a number that defines the interval period, so this will be every tenth of a second or 100 milliseconds. You can adjust that as needed, and then I'll set up an RxJS interval with that number. When we subscribe to this interval, it will emit a number that increases by 1 every tenth of a second. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now the tricky part is that we want this observable to stop emitting values when the user has stopped holding it. And for that, we can actually use the take and tell operator from RxJS, then pass in that cancel observable, so when cancel emits, it will cause this observable interval to complete. But while the interval is running, we want to use the tap operator to emit the custom event, which is hold time emit, and then we'll emit the number of milliseconds by multiplying it again by that original interval number. So that will emit the number of milliseconds when the user clicks down, but it will keep running forever because right now we don't have any observable that will cancel it. We can create that observable by taking our source state subject and then piping in the filter operator and filter it so that only the cancel events are emitted. 
And then we'll also throw in the tap operator here and console log that the hold is stopped in bright red. And then we'll have our custom event emit the number zero just so we can restart our progress bar when we get to the component. That takes care of the directive code. We can now go into the HTML and just drop that into a button and we'll get all of that custom functionality. If we click the button and hold for a second, you'll see that we first get our green console log, then we get a few hundred milliseconds, and then it stops and emits zero. It'll be the responsibility of the parent component to listen to these events. And then we'll set our demo up to delete the document from Firestore once it's been held for at least one second. We can go ahead and start in the HTML. We'll add the holdable directive and then listen to our custom hold time event. And then we'll define a function here called hold handler that takes the event as its argument. If you want to see how many milliseconds the button has been held, you can just add a console log to the hold handler function. Then to make this non-trivial, we'll bring in Firestore and load a collection of documents. Now I'm just going to copy and paste a pretty big chunk of code here, but basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a collection from Firestore and then I'm mapping the document IDs to that collection's data payload so we can use that ID to later delete a document. I cover this code in detail in the full Ionic course, as well as multiple other videos in the past. It's not critical for this video, so we'll just brush past it. The next important thing that we'll do is generate a component called customer, which will hold the data for each document in Firestore. When we retrieve this collection from Firestore, we're going to loop over it with ng4, and then we'll pass each unwrapped object to the child component. The app component is the parent component, so we'll set up our loop there. We declare the app customer component, run the ng4 loop. Angular Fire gives us that as an observable, so we unwrap it with the async pipe. Then we'll pass each document object down to the child component by wrapping customer in square brackets, and we'll set up that custom input property in the component in the next step. Now, before we write the child component, there's one last tip that I want to show you, and that's if you're using a progress bar, you'll want to add an animation property in the CSS, otherwise it will look really janky as it animates from step to step. Now, the child component's going to be pretty simple. We first bring in Angular Firestore, as well as input from Angular Core. Then we'll decorate the customer property with input, which allows it to be passed in through the parent component. And we'll also set up a progress property that starts at zero. Now the most important aspect of this component is the delete customer method that handles the hold time event that we defined from our directive. This method will take the event itself as well as the customer object as an argument, and it will update the progress on this component so we can change the value of the progress bar. When the button's being held down, it's going to emit this event every tenth of a second. We're dividing it by 10 to treat it more like a zero to 100 percentage. And if that value is greater than 100 or one second in this case, we'll use Angular Firestore to delete that customer's document from the database. And then the last formality for this demo is just the HTML markup in the child component. So we'll just interpolate some values from the database. Then we'll add our button down here at the bottom, which of course uses the holdable directive, then uses the delete customer method as the event handler. And then we also have that progress property available on this component, which we can use to show a progress bar. The only trick we have to do here is add value in square brackets, so it uses the progress value that we define in the component. And now if we go back to our app, we should have a result that looks something like this. I have some dummy records in my database. If I click the delete button, it will start the progress bar, but if I let go, then it stops. If I keep holding it for at least one second, then you'll see it actually deletes the record from the Firestore database. Hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to handle deletes gracefully in your UI. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If you have any questions, send me a message on Slack. And if you're ready to build and ship a real life product, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to all kinds of exclusive content like my full courses and book, as well as one-on-one -on -one project support. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.